I cannot believe I get to do this. I cannot believe that I publish a book or that an editor will buy a book and that there are people who are reading. The best part about it is being a part of other readers' lives. What an amazing thing to be somebody's favorite book. I mean, it's amazing. It's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah, that's the best thing. Um, I am very lucky and many of them do follow me name to name and I think the reason that they do is because of something that I hear almost every romance reader say when we start talking about books, which is, I read all kinds of things. And of course there are romance readers who only read romances. One of the things that people like to think about romance readers is that they only read romance, but romance readers are buying all the books, all the books. You know, the market you want when you're, when you're putting out a new lit fic whatever, you want those readers because they buy books and they read them and they write you emails and they follow you on social media. Romance readers are a fandom and they love you. They love, they love the genre. Who do I let read my book before I send it to my editor? Anybody who wants it. <laughs> Please, dear God, tell me if this book is good. I have a very, I've been, again, super lucky. I've had a very long lasting critique group. And it's, I've been very lucky to have these people who know my voice and know the kinds of stories I want to tell and hold me to the bar that I want to be held at. So they get to read the book before I send it on to my editor. It's hard being vulnerable and sending your book out to, to, to someone for their opinion. So you, you've got to have that trust. So one of my critique partners, when we met, we had both walked into a meeting for romance writers. It was an organization in Toronto. And we were the youngest people by several years. And I sat next to her. I was like, hey, friend. Hey, new friend. <laughs> so we would meet for coffee. And I was like, let's, let's trade stories. Let me give you my pages. And she was like, no, no. I think we should read each other's favorite books first. I was like, oh, okay. It's like she wanted to date me. And I was like, okay, so we read each other's favorite books. And I was like, now, now let's trade. Bait. And she was like, no, no. I think what we're going to do now is we're going to talk about what we want, what we loved about those books that we traded and what we want to emulate in those books. And I credit that Sinead's, you know, slow down dating approach to not only our long lasting friendship and critique partner, but keeping that in mind, that, that that's the bar, that feeling that I want to give readers, that's, that's where we, that's how we get it, is remembering that bar. So I was lucky enough to get one of my first books published, and then the rejections came, and you, you believe, I mean, and this is true for every author I talk to, is that once you get published, like the road is paved with gold and off you go to the New York Times bestseller list. And it's never, I mean, of course, sometimes it's that way, but really it isn't. And part of success in this building, in this business, and part of having a long career is you have to reinvent yourself after every uh, rejection. It's that thick skin, and it's also a weird amount of hope, you know, and, and like belief that your next book is better than anything you've ever written. Like it's a it's a hard thing to balance, but you cannot be precious, and weirdly you cannot take it personally. Like the 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 industry is an industry, and it does not care about your feelings, or you know, you just have to think keep thinking of ways to try to make it happen, and obviously really belief in your books. You know, another thing that I always tell people is have have that friend that you say all those terrible things to and then sit down and write the next book because you can't take that into your work and you can't take it into the industry and you can't take it into query letters or proposals or business meetings. Like you show up humble and, you know, ready to do it. So when I first started writing, I sold to Harlequin, which is a well-known romance publisher here in Canada and around the world. And they, my, my name is Molly Fader, and they said, we need a different name, something that says romantic comedy. Molly Fader, I guess, wasn't, <laughs> didn't scream that. So I gave them a list of names, and they said, no, we'll go with Molly O'Keefe. So I was Molly O'Keefe for a number of years. And then when I started to write sexier books, M. O'Keefe, very mysterious, was my pen name. And now that I'm writing women's fiction and sort of general fiction, they're going back to Molly Fader, full circle.
so in terms of like switching between the names and how my career's gone, I just like it's I'm so lucky that I get to write these three kinds of stories, right? Like and, and I think to the you know, outside eye, there might not be that much difference. My women's fiction has romance and certainly my rom-coms and then the hotter stuff all sort of have the same, you know, romantic story line. But I'm just so lucky that I get to, you know, sexier stories. The, the sex scenes are, reveal so much more character than in other books. And now in women's fiction, you know, I get to shut the door or pull back and tell a wider, deeper story about family and friendships. So I'm just, it's like the luckiest thing in the world that I get to do all three.